In the name of the one holy and triune God. Amen. Amen. There comes a time at least once in everyone's life when they face a rejection of something they have held near and dear in their hearts. And when that happens, there are three things you can do. You can totally deny it and continue living in denial. You can fight to keep it from changing and therefore causing all kinds of alienation and misery. Or you can face it and learn something that will change you forever. Raising children can bring this about. Culture change can bring this about. Death can bring this about. It can happen in all kinds of circumstances. Peter faced this changing moment many times in his journey of following Jesus, but none was as devastating as the one that we read about today. Up until this point, the disciples were learning so many things from Jesus, and the community was growing in love and acceptance of one another. But on this day, a new note was introduced by Jesus, one that no one had ever dreamed of. On this day, Jesus told them what was going to happen. He was going to go to Jerusalem, the religious center of all Jews. He was to suffer under the authority of the religious leaders, and he was to be killed. And on the third day, he would rise from the dead. I suspect those listening didn't hear this last part. They were too caught up in the shock of hearing that Jesus would be tortured and killed. They never got to resurrection. And Peter, like any one of us might do to protest this awful news, objected strongly. Oh no, he said, not you, Lord. We won't let that happen to you. Jesus' response was swift and sharp like the crack of a whip. He said, get behind me, Satan. There was no, now, now, Peter, let's calm down. He said very strongly, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. Whoa. A bit heavy, don't you think? Satan, a stumbling block, temptation. And Peter must have been devastated absolutely devastated at this response. His beloved teacher had never been this in your face before. He was just expressing his love for Jesus and his fear that something so horrible could happen to someone he loved so dearly. And his reaction implied that he, Peter, would not let this happen. But Peter had something to learn Peter had a lot to learn. Following Jesus is not this nice walk through the countryside helping people in need. Following Jesus is a dangerous thing to do. It is dying in so many ways. Following Jesus is not allowing the stumbling blocks to impede your work, your ministry, your journey. Stumbling blocks are to be nipped in the bud, tossed aside. And Peter, with his strong protest and assurance that this whole thing could be prevented, was a stumbling block to be avoided, and Jesus made that very clear. Get behind me, Satan, he said. Peter was propose, proposing to fight to win and not giving in so easily. It was a tempting proposition. What would it have looked like if Jesus had entertained what Peter proposed? He would never have gone to Jerusalem. He'd have toned down his rhetoric a little, certainly not challenging the authorities anymore. 
He would have healed people only when it was a safe thing to do and he was in a safe place and he would have constantly second-guessed himself. And if he had done what Peter had proposed, he would no longer be the man they all loved. He would be like Peter, who would then be in competition with him for leadership of the Jesus movement. But that is not what Jesus is all about. Jesus is about not playing it safe, and challenging any and all who need to be challenged. Safety was a threat to his very being. Safety did not promote the kingdom of God. Safety did not heal the sick, feed the hungry, question the authorities, teach people how to live in community, how to love. Playing it safe took away the very thing that people most loved him for. No. Peter was a stumbling block at that moment. Fortunately for Peter, he truly loved his Lord so much that he accepted the rebuke and tried to understand what Jesus was talking about. And of course, none of it made sense until after the resurrection. And of course, they had totally missed that part. We like to think our faith in Jesus is safe. That is the stumbling block for us all. And because we want to be safe and live an easy life, we don't confront the stumbling block. We try to evade it, walk around it, ignore it. If we have doubts, we stick them in the back of the closet and keep them in the dark so that we aren't to dis be disturbed by them. But they're there, and they creep up on us when we are least suspecting it. Like Jesus telling the disciples what was to happen. No, no, that's not the way it's supposed to happen. And because we don't want to face the stumbling block, we begin to have a crisis of faith. What if, maybe, where is God? That's not what Jesus meant. And on and on we go. Peter had a choice. He could have walked away in disgust, or he could walk to Jerusalem with Jesus, and he chose the latter. He didn't understand, but he was willing to grapple with it, even in the darkest, most frightening moments. He finally confronted the stumbling block, and he never once looked back. Theologian Hans Kuhn said that questions of faith are not like riddles or crossword puzzles that have the answers. Questions of faith don't have answers. They have more questions. But if we don't look at those questions, our understanding of God will never get beyond the most immature level, and we become stumbling blocks for God. We become temptation for others. Peter would have preferred for things to have stayed the same, but of course God had other plans for Peter from the very beginning. God constantly challenged Peter and Peter confronted each stumbling block he faced. Questions like, do non-Jews who become Christians have to first become Jews? Do they have to obey the food laws of Torah? Remember, the disciples were Jews. Do they have to be circumcised? And we say, of course not. But those were the burning questions of Peter's culture. They were making a big step out of the ordinary. They were leaving home for good. What are the burning questions of our culture? Huh, where do we start? How do we face the confrontation of all the stumbling blocks our culture puts before us every single day? Do you dare to face the challenge and risk rethinking what you believe? Do you dare risk being changed? That's the cross, folks. That's the biggest cross of all. Amen.